Hello mortals. You are probably very, very, small, compared to the size of the earth. It would take Jesus around two years to run a full circle around it. But at the speed of light, that time would become 13 milliseconds. To pass through the solar system, you'd spend around 10 hours at light speed. If we were to take the supermassive black hole from the center of our galaxy and put it in the sun's place, it would engulf Mercury. And later the entire solar system because of its gravity. But what about the biggest known black hole? What if we throw it in the center of our solar system? 3. 2. 1. Go. Wait. Nothing changed? Where is it? Let's zoom out a bit. There it is, the magnificent hypermassive black hole, Ton 618. It would take you a whooping two weeks of traveling at the speed of light in order to cross it. That is, if you would not die. Great thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Start your free trial at squarespace.com slash science file the AI. First discovered in 1957, Ton 618, which from now we'll refer to simply as Ton was thought to be a star inside the Milky Way, although suspiciously violet. Thirteen years later, because of some unusual radio emissions, it was categorized as a quasar. Not inside the Milky Way, but at 10 billion light years away. For reference, the light coming from it that we are seeing right now, originated 10 billion years ago, when neither the Earth, nor even the solar system existed. 10 billion years ago our galaxy merged with a smaller one called Gaia, and took the shape that we know of today. In other words, this quasar is incomprehensibly far away. And you might ask, what exactly is a quasar? It's when a central galactic black hole is surrounded by a huge accretion disk, and due to all the friction going on, it starts to shine brighter than all of the stars around it combined. Ton is so hyperluminous that it outshines the entire galaxy that it is located in. That's 150 trillion times brighter than the Sun, or about 10,000 times brighter than our entire galaxy, which, mind you, contains 300 million stars. So yeah, ironically, the black hole from which not even light can escape, emits a lot of light. That's about as bright as our hope for cyberpunk. A stellar black hole the size of our Earth would weight as much as 1,000 suns. Make it as big as our sun, and that number becomes 200,000. The previously mentioned Sagittarius A, at the center of the Milky Way, has 4.3 million solar masses. And then there is our beloved Tun, with a mind-bending 66 billion solar masses. It is so huge, that even the biggest hypothetical star, the Quasi Star, is just a little speck in comparison. But how do these cosmic behemoths even appear? For smaller black holes, it's simple. Star goes boom, while the core goes move. But what about these gargantuan monsters? No star can possibly result in a black hole this big. Scientists think that their origins are ancient. When the first black holes had formed shortly after the Big Bang, they would consume the nearby gas clouds. In the process, they would release radiation that would heat even more neighboring gas clouds. As they got heated, they collapsed easier and became meals for the black hole. This is why, the primordial black holes were thought to grow at an exponential rate, getting to tens of billions of solar masses, and becoming the centers of the galaxies that we see today. But there is a small issue. Scientists have estimated that ultramassive black holes have an upper limit to mass. 50 billion solar masses. Once one gets to this size, it would consume the unstable part of the accretion disk around it, leaving only the stable part which would start orbiting the black hole instead of falling inside. So here's the problem, Ton 618 weights 66 billion times more than the Sun, which contradicts the practical limit of 50. So what's going on here? The answer to it is the good old we don't know. One of the most probable explanations is that another huge monstrosity collided with Tun, resulting in the only hypermassive black hole known to break this limit to this date. Will we find bigger ones? Probably yes. Do they exist? Certainly yes. 
Considering that the universe is infinite in size, there might very well be cases in which two, maybe three, or even more gargantuan holes collide and result in monsters with the mass well above 100 billion suns. There is no theoretical limit to that. But even these seemingly endless behemoths are not eternal. Everything slowly marches towards death. And that includes black holes. They slowly lose mass by evaporating due to Hawking radiation. But this is an incredibly slow process. It would take 10 to the power 99 years for ton to completely evaporate. That's 10 followed by 99 zeros. The universe has existed for only this much. So there is still a very, very long way until everything in the universe decays. And in these end times, black holes might very well be our final homes. But hey! Don't be sad. You'll be dead by then. Meanwhile I've got some awesome news for you. Remember my website made with today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've added a link to my small merch store over there. And with that, the website is complete, all easily made on the platform provided by Squarespace. You are given templates, all the tools you need, and even the ability of acquiring a domain, all from your browser. Want a portfolio, a personal blog, a shop, or pretty much anything else? They've got you covered with tons of professionally built templates. No need for coding knowledge, and any question is answered with their 24-7 customer support. Add tons of pre-made sections such as a photo gallery, a headline or even a product showcase, and customize it as you desire. You can also track your website analytics straight from here. Start your free trial at squarespace.com slash science file the AI and use code science file the AI to get 10% off your first purchase. The links can be found in the description, together with the link to my personal website.